Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new spoiler breakdown. Today, we're going to break down season three, the final season of Dickinson on Apple TV+. Welcome back to another review here on Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Dinnenberg. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, do movie reviews, these type of TV show reviews, streaming platform reviews, uh, movie rankings, and box office breakdowns. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell. We just got over 100 subscribers. Let's get to our next milestone, 150, as quickly as possible. So share the video as well. If you're also just back as usual, share with your friends and family. And also, let's start this Dickinson conversation. If you don't see a lot of people talking about this show live, this is a great space to talk about Dickinson season three, spoiler fashion. So that's why in the comment section down below, let me know your spoiler thoughts. Rank all the seasons for me. Did you love the show? Are you sad that this is the end? Do you want a season four? Um, obviously this is the end, you won't get a season four, but would you like a season four? Let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video, that's the thumbs up and let's talk Dickinson. So I, re I reviewed season two, spoiler, last year. Um, this was the first ever Apple TV Plus show that I've ever watched. Obviously it came out this, the day Apple TV Plus launched. Um, so I was there from the first day it came out to now uh, here, December 24th, 2021, uh, the last day it came out. So definitely a lot of emotions with the last season, but um, I'm just talking about season three specifically here. Um, I, I will rank the season at the end of this video, but I really am just talking season three. So the main plot line, again, spoilers. If you haven't seen season anything of Dickinson, spoilers are coming. So this season really is about Emily choosing. Last season, she kind of learned what it was like trying to be famous if she wanted to be famous. And this season, for the most part, is about Emily being okay with, even if she doesn't become this famous poet or famous person from her time, even being a female famous person, the fact that she's just a, a poet and just wants to do her and, you know, likes a woman and all these different things is just okay. And, and she doesn't need anyone else to validate that. It doesn't, you know, she doesn't need people to tell her how great her poems are. She knows that she just loves doing poetry and just wants to do that. But there's a lot of other things going on this season. Betty, um, who now doesn't work for the family, now is just making dresses. Her husband, Henry, is now in the war, not giving her letters. We learn at the end of the season that Henry does give her her letters finally. Um, the parents have a couple subplots. The, her, uh, you know, Emily's brother, Austin, has a subplot where he's basically drunk throughout the entire season. Um, so this, for me, was a bit of a disappointing season for me, a bit of a at this point, in my opinion, meaningless season. I know it's the weird to say that for a last season for the show, but it just felt like the, the show did run out of gas late. Um, trying to think of stories to tell, and it does make sense that this is the last season because they, they did struggle at times balancing all of the characters and the subplots going on. And that was kind of what was great about season one, kind of a bit less in season two and a lot less here in season three. They had just had a hard time balancing, I think, tones in season three of Dickinson. I think, first of all, of course, Haley Steinfeld is absolutely fantastic. I talk about her every week in Hawkeye, um, but she's become an absolute superstar. And this is really the show for me, seeing her act the strongest. Um, this is her show from start to finish. Um, and she's really excellent in the show. And again, even when some episodes or some subplots or some extraterrestrial stuff in her mind starts happening, it's still watchable because she's so good in the lead role. Um, and um, Haley Seinfeld, I can't wait to see her what she does next. If she sticks with TV, obviously she just did Big Hawkeye um, and um, Dickinson, but what she does next following these two shows, um, which is gonna be really interesting to watch. Um, but as a whole, the cast is all great as usual. The family is great. I thought the parents probably were the funniest they've been in a, it all, all show. Um, Jane Kukowski, Toby, Ka and um, the, the, the parents were absolutely fantastic. And then Austin, and um, the, and Emily's sister also, Vinny, were also really, really fun to watch as well this season. Um, with Khalifa obviously getting in there as a cameo, but my biggest problem with the show for me, actually the, my favorite subplot, I'll start with positives as I usually do. My biggest positive subplot was actually Henry's subplot where Henry is in the war and he's told uh, to teach these African-American soldiers um, to, to learn to read and write. Um, and this then leads to them having this conversation with Henry kind of being a philosophical African-American in Amherst to these people who just want to be in war. Um, these are African-Americans who keep being denied of war. They just want to be a part of something um, and then being slandered not to be in the war um, has then leads to Henry 
fighting for them uh, to get their uniform checks and then to go to war with them. I thought that that whole subplot was by far my favorite part. You really could have done a whole show on Henry's whole subplot in the season. Sadly, Henry didn't interact with any characters from the actual show this season because he was stuck at war. And I was thinking that they would bring Henry back to see Betty at the end of the show, but I thought they did a nice job with that having Betty get the letters because Henry keeps writing letters, but doesn't send them to Betty. So Betty doesn't know if she's, if he's dead, if he's alive. And I thought that was the best subplot for me by far of the entire season. Um, and then that leads obviously to Henry and then Henry, you know, um, the Colonel who was with Henry giving, um, Betty at the end of the se- end of the season, uh, end of the show, Henry's letter. So I thought that was a nice tie up to both Betty's storyline and Henry's storyline all together. Um, and again, and Henry, Emily, from a mental point of view, understanding that it's not about what everyone perceives about me. I love to write. So I'm going to st- spend my life writing and I love my family. So I'm going to keep living with my family. I think that she just, she got away from all the which I thought was one of her stronger uh, seasons was the fact that she didn't care about the public's perception per se this season. Um, And this also learned about writing to specific people because that's when the Sue stuff kind of broke away this season because she usually just only wrote publicly to Sue. And this is the first time she wrote to someone else, the Colonel Higginson who did show up trying to see her at the end of the show, but she did not, she did not come downstairs to see him in episode 10. Um, but um, the Sue stuff I thought was better than season two, but not as good as season one. I thought Sue's best episode of the entire show was episode 10, where when Colonel Higginson comes in, she kind of wants to do everything to make him comfortable because this is the person that Emily is writing to and how important this person really is to Emily and to the public. So Sue getting involved was great. And also Sue and Austin rekindling their relationship in the last three or four episodes was also very nice. Now, I did think it was very lazy what they did with Austin. It didn't sound like they had anything to do with Austin this season. So they kind of just made him drunk the entire season and kind of gave that reason why he hates his family and why we need a storyline where the family needs to get Austin back involved. It just felt really lazy the way Austin's written into the show. Um, And as I said, the tones for me, this is the one season where I thought the tones were quite off of the show. You would go back and forth from a really ridiculous, funny scene to a pretty serious scene. And you kind of go back and forth with that a couple episodes. And it's very jarring when, especially there's a scene where you go from Henry and his African-American, you know, battalion basically getting denied the uniform check. And the next scene, Lavinia basically talking about the, you know, the staring down the sheep in the barn. Like those two scenes don't really work back to back with each other. And it's just jarring when it happened. I was like, this is just not the same show, uh, the back and forth. And that's how I kind of felt a lot of this season was that sometimes the tones weren't always there where you would take Emily very, very seriously. And then you get this super thing where you got the, you got mermaids at the end of the episode 10 in her mind. Um, there was the whole episode where she was a dream sequence with all the family being over the top. It was just, sometimes it was a little too ridiculous this season. Um, I totally get everything Emily in her mind. Um, but it did get a little bit too ridiculous this season with what Emily's thoughts were. And it just pulled me out of the show and those things were happening but again this is a very fun show that i'm very sad is gone because the first season was really fantastic i think season two was solid and this was also solid as well a really solid comedy with a really spectacular performance and a really great ensemble but it really is Haley seinfeld who makes or breaks the show and she makes this show great so it's very sad that dickinson so if i would rank the seasons i would go season one was the best season two was the second best in season three so it kind of went downhill for me I feel like this could have been the season finale of episode, the season finale of season three could have been the season finale of, of season two and still felt the exact same way, which is a pretty meaningless season, but because I get to watch these characters on screen for a full 10 episodes again, it was fun, but I wish there was more interesting subplots and stories going on in this season. So that's my thoughts on season three of Dickinson. If you want to see my season two spoiler review, I did that last year when season two came out of Dickinson. You can leave that link right up there. My other TV show reviews are out this year, including Haley Steinfeld and Hawkeye. Multiple videos are coming out soon, including my Matrix Films ranking, Don't Look Up review, um, and a box office breakdown are all coming soon on the channel. So please subscribe and ring the bell. See you guys soon.